scene of the crime, I can just smell it. You don't think we're gonna find anything really creepy, do you? Oh, boy, do I hope so. <laughs> if we're lucky, we'll find Mr. Al Clark himself. Or at least what's left of him. Come on, come on, give me a hand. Uh, no, I'll, I'll stay here and keep a lookout. You go ahead. Oh, come on, don't tell me you're checking. I wonder if there really is a dead body around here. Didn't we find Peter? Come on! Any news? No, during the last couple of hours. I can't believe that Cruz let that woman go. He could have forced her to talk. He had her in there a long time. He tried everything. Not everything. Well, what, Victoria? Thumb screws? Torture is no longer permissible. Well, it should be, because this is torture. Look, Cruz knows what he's doing. He's an expert at tracking down these kind of people. And, and she's bound to lead him to, to where he, she's got Chip. No, a little risky. He could lose her. He won't. I just wish somebody would call us. Two hours is a hell of a long time to wait. Hey guys, I know this is really hard. Just try to keep the faith, okay? Hey, just talk to Pearl. He uh, and Cruz trailed Wilma to a little shack on the beach. Here's the address. It's okay, really. Go ahead. Just get in the way. <laughs> Take a look there. Don't you worry, sweetheart. Nobody's gonna take you away. No. I won't let them. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, there she is. She is? And what the heck are we waiting for? I say we, we get on over there before we give her a chance to do anything no, else. Come no, on. Not so fast. Why? I can't see the boy. I don't want to make a move until we know exactly where that boy is. Come on, Cruzy. The woman is a nutcase, man. I say the sooner we get over there, get the boy out of there, the better. Come Girl, on. we got to look out for his safety. That's number one priority. What do we do? We just stand here and wait? Believe me, I don't intend to stand here and wait. The guy from the department called something about a file you requested. Good, I've been waiting for that. Hey, you're not going to leave without eating, are you? I'm not very hungry. What are you talking about? It's good. I mean, I made the seasoning myself. It's Jake's special salad dressing, you know, with the secret herbs and spices. I'm thinking about marketing it. You know, give Paul Newman a run for his money. Good, huh? Ice cream. See that? What are you doing here, anyway? I thought that you had your own restaurant to run. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just filling in for Pearl. He's out, you know, searching for Chip. That's very nice of you. Well, uh, seems like everybody's doing what they can to pitch in. Almost everybody. Come on. You know, it's... I know, I know. They also serve only who stand and wait. I can't help it. I, I just feel really helpless, and I know what she's going through, and I... I don't know what to do. Hi. There you are. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry I wasn't here sooner. Were you waiting long? No, no. Well, actually, I've been looking for you all afternoon. Oh, well, that's quite a compliment coming from you. Well, um, some people called from Los Angeles. You're the people who were doing the reunion? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they said it was this evening, and they haven't heard from you. They sound like they're really eager to see you tonight, Kate. I, I think you should give them some kind of response. I can't go. Why not? I have responsibilities here. I have to help Cruz with this kidnapping case. I can't just no, run no, off. No, Wilma's been found. She was? Yes, just a little while ago. They tracked her to some shack on the beach. And uh, Cruz and Pearl are there right now. Maybe I should no, go. No, no, I'm sure they have this situation in hand. This is terrific. Yeah, Mason and Victoria took off the minute they heard, so hopefully, any luck, they'll have the baby back very soon. Yeah, God willing. So, about that reunion. Can you think of any other excuses not to go? Hush, little darling, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring turns brass, 
Mama's gonna buy you a looking glass. Your daddy looking glass gets broke. Mama's gonna buy you a billy goat. Well, she's not picking up. I'm gonna give it a rest. Hey, you want I should try? I'll stay on the line forever. You know, let it ring, do, 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 just like with the airlines. Yeah, you know? yeah, you do that. Let, let me know the minute she calls. Last three though. digits, two, three, six. Two, three, six. Okay. Okay, Doc, why don't you stand out over here? Try to stay out of the line of action. What's going on here? Steel? Yeah, that's me. Officer right. Rankin, I'll be taking over this operation from here on out. Uh, wait a second, pal. What's going Listen, on? Listen, headquarters appreciates what you've done, all right? Uh, finding this lady and all that. But this is a job for the police, and that's why we're here. They said the police don't know what's going on with her. You see, this is a, a real fragile young woman. You don't want to... A show of force is the last thing you want to try right now. Look, we've been trained in this sort of operation. So have I, and I've had a lot of experience in the field. If you give me an hour, I can talk her out of there. I know I can. Listen, hey, man, what's your name? Jim. Jim, I had her in my office yesterday. I know the way her mind works. Now, she doesn't want to hurt that kid, but she's real scared. You go in there waving guns and making a big noise, there's no telling what she's going to do. Look, I'd like to oblige you. You have to oblige me, man. We both know what's important here, and it's not following orders. It's getting that baby out of there alive. Now, I'm, I, I'm asking for an hour. One hour, that's all I'm asking. That's not too much. One hour, then we move in. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming down. I was there when the ambulance request came in. How's things going? Well, as well as you could expect under the circumstances. All right, well, I'm going to be standing by at the hospital if you need me, okay? I appreciate that, Scott. I sure hope we don't need you. Yeah, I know what you mean. Scott, what are you doing here? What happened? No, nothing. What? Nothing's happened. I'm just letting you know that I'm nearby if you need me, okay? Oh, okay. Thank you. You take care of yourself. And don't worry about anything. You got the best. Okay. Mason, take care of her, right? Right. Any progress? Well, yes and no. What, is, what does that mean, Cruz? It means the situation is under control right now. Cruz! Guess who? Yeah. Wilma, this is Cruz Castillo. Thank you for picking up the phone. You better tell him to go away. Who? The big old police car sitting in my front yard. I don't like it, and I don't like you following me either. Okay, Wilma, listen, I wanted to ask you, is, is the baby with you now? Is Chipper there with you right That's now? That's none of your concern. <laughs> Look. If you let us come over and pick the boy up right now, this whole mess will be over. We'll all go away and leave you alone. You ain't taking my baby. Now, you let one cop set one foot in my house. And nobody will live to tell about it. All right, well, how about over here? No, not there. That space is too small. It'll overwhelm everything over there. Oh, well, Miss Interior Decorator here, thank goodness you're here. We wouldn't want to <laughs> overwhelm this wall, would we? It is true, I have taste. And it is true, I have a crick in my neck. So let's hang this sucker. Where do you want it? This um, wall? This would be good. No, how about right there? No, right there. Oh. Yeah. Ah, don't oh. fall forward. Oh, fall backwards. You're going to totally crush the baining. You're all heart. <laughs> God, geez. Right here? Mm, yeah, but a little bit down. Down? Down. Okay, now a little teeny bit left. A teeny bit left, not a whole lot. my grip here. <laughs> right there? No. Okay, now a teeny, down. teeny bit right. Teeny. Perfect. Okay. Okay, now you can put it down. Good. Good. My neck. I swear I can feel it right here. Right there. Okay. Be careful. Ah, oh. Ah, that is tight. Yeah, that hurts good. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> a little bit of girl, you certainly have strong fingers there. Yeah, well, I used to have a girlfriend who was a masseuse and she taught me things. See this right here? Yeah. Feel that? Ah, that yeah. is a pressure point. I feel that pressure point. <laughs> yeah. ah. Do you want a soda? Yeah, that sounds good. You know, I gotta thank you for helping me out. I mean, you really know how to take charge. Thanks. I, mean, I don't know what I would have done without you. Yeah, well, it's starting to come together, isn't it? Mm. You're gonna have yourself a pretty nice little home here. I don't know about a home. Kind of a uh, crash site. 
Oh, excuse me, but I have been working here all day long trying to make this place look nice, and I think it's going to look better than a crash site. Well, you know what? I mean, home is... Yeah. I mean, it's across town. And just for a little while, because it's a little battle zone over there. But I'll be back. Yeah, I know, kiddo. Not for a while, though. I mean, right now, I don't... I don't feel like going there. Well, you know, I think now it's up to your mom and dad. I mean, there's nothing you can do anymore. And they're grown-ups, and they're either going to work it out or they're not. And in the meantime, I think that you're a big boy now, and it's about time that you moved out of the nest. Yeah. And it's, it's not as hard as you think. I mean, I've been on my own since I was 14. Yeah, I know, that's right. Anyway, I think that, uh, I think that home is a state of mind. Well, for me, it's a state of siege. And wherever <laughs> I go is on my mind. You're right. You're right. I've been using every excuse in the book up to and including this kidnapping to keep from going to this reunion tonight. I know you have. And I'm going to keep on using every excuse I can find because, to tell you the truth, I really don't want to go. Okay, why not? Look, it's a long story. Well, I have plenty of time. And I really don't want to go into it right now. You know you can tell me anything. Surely you don't hate any of those people. No, of course not. Well, I know that they really want to see you, that they made that clear over the phone. Andrea. Well, I, I just don't understand why, why you're avoiding them. I'm not avoiding them. It's the memories. They're painful. I know. Do you? Do you know how long it was before I got a decent night's sleep? I'd drift off, and immediately some horrible image would pop up, and I'd scream and, and wake, sitting up, uh, sweating and shaking. I know it was a horrible thing, something that no one should have to go through. Thank God it's over. No, it's never over. There's always another war. Well, the only one that I am concerned with right now is the war that's going on inside of you. Well, that's getting easier for me. I mean, I sleep fine. I wake up and I see you lying there and the world looks okay. I just feel that going to the stupid reunion is going to stir up all this garbage, and I just want to leave it buried. But you can't, because you still toss and turn in your sleep, and you grind your teeth at night. Well, I do? And... Yes. Well, Kane, all of those men are haunted by their memories, each and every one of them. I just thought if you spent some time together with them, it would do you some good. It would be a kind of healing. For you and for them. There's something I need to tell you. There was a woman that I knew over there. Her name was Sue Lee. And I loved her. Well, come on, Keith. This is probably just another one of your wild goose chases. No, no, no. No, we're getting warm. I can feel it. That's the humidity. I'm telling you, listen to me. My instincts, every instinct tells me that this is the right spot. Yeah, well, a couple of weeks ago, you said CeCe's wine cellar was the right spot. We were crawling around on our hands and knees, remember? Hey, I'm thorough, okay? Very thorough. And what did we find? We found nothing. What do you think? You don't think CeCe's any smarter than that? Do you think he's going to kill somebody and, and hide them in his boathouse? Look, we are talking about a crime of passion here. C.C. kills his wife's lover. Now, do you think he took time enough to, to be smart about it? Okay. Okay, picture this. Yeah. You're C.C. Yeah, yeah. A young C.C. Jealous. Crazy. And you come out here, you come out to your boathouse, and there's your wife. And she's yeah. in some other man's yeah. arms. Hell, yeah. and they're kissing, and they're passionate, yeah. and they're sweating. Yeah, I blow the sucker away. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. I pick him up. I pick up his body. There it is. Yeah, the 
Well, it's good. Well, it's getting there, isn't it? Getting nice. Yeah. Say we call it a day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Oh, you know what? You have got a really nice view. Oh, that's going to be neat, because you, you can look out over the city at night and all the lights and everything. Yeah, it's not that bad, is it? It's not that bad. What? It's great. Look at it. I know. I know. It's nice. I like it. <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny. I remember one time I moved into this really cute little house on the outskirts of town, and there was this meadow across the street. And um, there's all these wildflowers and daisies Maybe and stuff going over there. What? Uh, rustic, you know, country-like kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> okay, anyway, I had just got through unpacking, and I had eaten dinner and gone to bed and all that. And around 4 o'clock in the morning, there is this horrendous noise, and the whole house just starts shaking. Oh, an earthquake? No. No, a train. <laughs> Underneath all those wild no flowers and daisies were train tracks. Yes. So what'd you do? Well, there was nothing I could do, really. I'd already put a deposit on the house, so... I just kind of had to get oh, used man. to it. But anyway, the point of the story is, this is a really nice apartment, and you're going to get used to it. Yeah, I know. And it's on a nice, quiet street. I mean, there's no trains outside your window, and there's no fire stations. There's no, you know, nothing. Yeah, no relatives. Yeah, see, that ropes. too. This can kind of be, oh, it can kind of be your own little retreat, you know? You get away from everybody. Yeah, but I see, I don't know if that's what I want to do. Why? I mean, I don't want to turn my back on my family. That's... Yeah, but they're the ones who are bugging you. I know, but it's my family. You know, there's a very special bond there, you know? It's not like anything else. I mean, if you're going out with somebody and it doesn't work out, you break up. Or if you're seeing a friend, you kind of fall out of the relationship. It's no big deal. I mean, it's sad, but it's, it's not tremendously heavy. I just think with the family, there's this flesh and blood bond, you know, and, and there's nothing like it. And no matter where you go, you know that they'll always be there for you. I hear someone's stomach growling. Is that yours or mine? I didn't hear anything. Are you hungry? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Well, good, because I have got this great idea. I'll go out and get something to picnic on, and I'll come back here and we can have dinner on your brand new floor. Okay. Okay, right, yeah. we'll just um, kind of christen the place. Sounds good. Great. Well, I don't understand. What, 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 wait, wait, wait. Did I just bore you to death about talking about my family here? No, no, not at all. Anyway, what is it that you want? Do you want pizza or do you want deli food? Surprise me. Surprise my memory. Bye. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know how to describe her to you. She's gentle. And she had this grace about her that, that, that was in everything she did. Even the smallest things, like picking up a cup of tea or uh, entering a room. I don't know why. I'm, I shouldn't tell you this. Yes, no. no. Yes, you should. I want you to. I'm not jealous, believe me. If anything, it makes me feel closer to you. Somehow, in the midst of all that chaos, had this incredible inner peace about her. And when I was with her, I shared that peace with her. It was what she gave me. She sounds like a remarkable woman. Well, she was. She wasn't perfect. I mean, we had arguments. She had this temper. But underneath it all, she, she had this incredible equilibrium. She just flowed with everything. She was like a well of cool, clear water, and I could, I could go to her and just drink. You loved her a great deal, didn't you? She kept me from losing my mind for a long time. What happened to her? Well, that's a story for uh, another time. But I, I carried her memory with me for so long. I didn't want to give her up. I didn't, I didn't want to let her go. Yeah, well, I, I understand that. I did the exact same thing with my father. <laughs> I guess the tricks our minds play are pretty incredible. I don't know. 
I just always figured that when you're ready to let go of something, you will. Yeah, I guess. She left such a hole inside of me when she died. I didn't think anybody or anything could ever fill it again. I met you. I know I'm possessive and demanding, and I, I crowd you just when you need space. But I gotta tell you, you've been such a turning point for me. Things that keep coming up so quickly, I can't even deal with them. And, and then there's sometimes I just want to tell you something. I, I, I want to say something to you, and it, it's caught in my throat. You are really a remarkable person. Do you know that? You, you keep me pointed forward. You, you show me that, that there is a, a present and that I, I actually have a future. I mean, in the, before, I, I was so stuck in the past, I was mired up to my eyeballs. Well, thank you. That is the nicest compliment anyone's ever paid me. But you know something? You did all of that, not me. You moved yourself forward. Uh, I mean, you were the catalyst. I was honored to be the catalyst. <laughs> Tell me something. Sure. If you've been able to put Vietnam behind you and and you were able to let go of Suli, why can't you go to this reunion? I mean, is there some other reason that you can't go? I don't understand. No, I've, I've told you everything. That's that's uh, all of it. Hey, Carver. Lamar. <laughs> hey, it's been a while. Yeah, huh? yeah. Hey, let me introduce you to someone. This is uh, Andrea. This is Lavar. We uh, we did some time in Vietnam together. Huh? Yeah, I live in Santa Barbara now, but we bump into each other from time to time. Hey, not often it's enough. Very nice to meet you, Paul. <laughs> Hey, where'd you meet such a pretty lady? Hey, well, sit down. I'll tell you about it. Let me get you something to drink. What do you want? How about a cup of coffee? Okay, you got it. Do you want anything? No, I'm fine. So you and Kane were in the army together? Yeah, that's right. I understand you boys have a reunion this year. Oh, yeah, that's where I'm off to. Wouldn't miss it for the world. <sighs> well, I better get moving soon. Have to drive down to yeah. L.A. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you and Kane want to ride? No, actually, LeVar, Kane doesn't want to go. A reunion without Sarge? I know. You know, he is really resisting this, and, and I don't... I can't explain why. I think I can guess. What's all this? Uh, I'm afraid it's the best I can do, ma'am. Well, where's the stuff I asked for? It was just one report on the evening of January 28, 1958. I'm afraid Mr. Timmons appropriated it for himself. That little skunk. Oh, maybe I'm on to something. Boy, don't worry, because everything in the report uh, has a cross-reference here. You don't say. <laughs> well, I'll be here all night. It's okay. I have a lot on my mind. It'll keep me occupied. Now, I took the liberty of looking this up for you. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Well, are you holding up? I don't know. I feel like I'm in the middle of a bad dream, and I might wake up, though. Thank you. I, uh, I just spoke to Julia. She said if you want to use the beach house, take a nap or just no, get away. No, I can't. I can't leave here, okay? Maybe you should think about it, Victoria. You don't look so good. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know what I mean. My eyes are stinging. My body hurts. I'm buzzed out on caffeine. I'm ready to bounce off the walls. I'll call you the minute anything happens. There's nothing you can do until then. Yes, there is. I can will him to be okay if I concentrate all my energy on it, Mason. Victoria. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's all that I can do. Please try to understand. I've got an idea. Anything, Cruz. What? Anything. I need your help to carry it out, Mason. What is it? 
Well, I got a feeling I could talk myself blue in the face and that woman would never listen to me. She seems to see me as the enemy. Yeah, well, I guess she would. I'm... Well, I understand that. Maybe you could try a different approach. Maybe if we appealed to her through you as the baby's father, maybe we'd get more of a gut-level reaction out of her. What should I say? Well, she's obviously formed some kind of bond with the baby. I mean, she, in her mind, that is her, her son now. If we could get her to recognize the fact that he already has a family that feels as strongly about him as, as she does, maybe we could jolt her out of this fantasy she's running and get her to, uh, to talk to us. We could start reasoning with her again. I'll do my best. Well, don't, uh, don't accuse her of anything or threaten her in any way, but just, just make the best plea you can for his well-being. Just, just tell her that you'll love him. I got it. Wilma, this is Mason Capwell. Who? I'm Chip's father. <laughs> Chip doesn't have a father. At least not one I saw. I'm sorry. I, I guess I didn't have a chance to meet you. I was there for a whole week. Tended to him. If, if he's your son, how come you didn't come around to visit? Well, Victoria and I are divorced. And... Oh, and you didn't have time. Well, ain't that just too bad? Nonetheless, I care very deeply about him. Words are cheap. Please, just listen to me for a minute. Why should I? Keith, are, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's sort of an Jacques Cousteau thing one time. Doing it yourself is not exactly like watching someone dive on ah, television. You're such a worry wart. Really, this, this is very risky stuff. Look, I don't care, okay? We're never going to have a better chance than we are tonight. Here, here, why don't you try turning the air on first? You know how to do that? Well, I did date a diving instructor once. Why didn't you say so? Because you're Mr. Know-it-all. Besides, you didn't ask. We'd be more than willing to step aside for a professional. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going in oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, come here, come here. No, Look, Keith. just shimmy into this little wetsuit right here. Come on, come on. I dive for seashells and sand dollars. That's it, not for dead bodies. You are such a scary cat. I am not. Baby, listen to me. Think about all of the money that we're going to milk CC for, okay? Now, all you got to do is just jump in there and bring up a couple of bones. Don't be squeamish. Old Hal sank in there 30 years ago. The fish have probably picked him clean by now. So, how come you don't want to come to the reunion? Oh, no, not you two now. Oh, you think they're going to serve cheap liquor or something? Hey, did Henry put you up to this? No, I'm asking on behalf of myself and all the other guys you served here. There's a whole bunch of them who are anxious to see you, man. And you aren't anxious to see them. How come? I'd rather not go, OK? What are you afraid of? I mean, what do you think they're going to say to you? Well, maybe they're going to wonder what happened to all the guys that didn't make it there tonight. Huh? What happened to them all, the guys that didn't come back? How many years has it been? No, I lost count. And how many are you going to go on carrying this thing around with you? It happened, LeVar. I can't hide that. No, but you can forgive yourself. Oh, yeah, sure. All those men died because of me. But, oh, no, okay, don't worry about it. It's not your fault. But it is my fault, and I know it's my fault. Because I was in command. I was in charge. You think you're the only guy I ever get turned around in battle? Oh, what does it matter? They're all dead. They're all dead, and I'm alive. That's justice, isn't it? Well, it would have made things better if you had died right along with them. You know, when you go in, you expect some guys to die. Two or three, maybe. Or maybe one lone guy is off on himself, by himself, and he steps on a mine, and he gets blown to hell. But not all of them. Not all you men. Not in one afternoon. Not in one hour. Let it go. Somebody has to answer for it. Man, you beat up on yourself long enough. Look, those guys are dead. They're dead. And it's a damn shame, but there's nothing you or I can do about it. I don't think it's that simple. Hey, I made a lot of mistakes while I was in Nam. And I'd give anything to take some of it back. To be able to do it all over again, to, to rewrite history. The Moving Finger Writes. What? The Moving Finger Writes, and thus writ, it moves on. Nor all your piety, nor your wit shall lure it back.
cancel half a line, nor your tears wash out a word of it. Okay. You do come out with some weird stuff, Sarge. But I know what you mean. And I still say we have a choice. We can look at what happened over and over. We can acknowledge our mistakes. And then we can get on with our lives. Or we can let it eat away at us from the inside like a cancer. I wish I had your conviction. Hey, I figure those guys didn't die for nothing. They died for freedom. Now, some people think freedom's on the outside. And some think it's on the inside. But I'll tell you this one thing. I didn't survive just so I could come home and tie myself up in knots for the rest of my life. I don't think you did either. No, it's true. I haven't been around as much as I'd like lately, but that doesn't mean I don't care about my son. You walked out on him is what you did. No. I love Chip very much. You have to believe that. I don't have to do nothing. I'm always going to be part of his life. Done everything I can to make sure he'll have everything he needs. He'll be able to go to all the best schools and colleges. Fancy education don't make up for not having a good mom and daddy. He does have a mother and father. Wilma, we're, we're waiting right here for him. We miss him very much. I know your type. Rich people. You'll just stick him off in one of those boarding school places, and then you'll, you'll, you'll just let him rot, and you'll go off to your fancy party. That's not true. Really, it isn't. We'll, we'll both be spending a lot of time with Chip. Here in, in Santa Barbara, he'll have the best of everything. I'll make sure of it. Please, Wilma, let me come over and pick him up. Uh-uh. He's just fine where he is. He's happy. Well, maybe for the moment, Wilma, but what, what kind of life do you think you're going to be able to offer him? I can give him a lot of love. That much I know. You're going to be on the run all the time. The police are always going to be on your tail. You just tell them to stay away. Listen, I, I don't want to hurt you. Nobody here wants to hurt you, but if you take Chip and run off with him, then we'll have to follow him. I, I'll never give up searching for him, and neither will his mother. You're going to have to live with being wanted by the police. How can you raise a child under those circumstances? Do you think he's going to be very happy? I don't know. You won't be able to keep a job. How will you put food on the Stop table? Stop it. You're going to be miserable, both of you. Miserable and scared. I don't scared. Hear this. All the time. Look. Well, if you, if you let him go, if you just give him back to the people who love him, then... I promise you that no harm will come to you. You can go free. But you have to turn him over to us now. Otherwise, I won't be able to keep that promise. No police? No police. Because I swear, if, if I see one single police, I swear I'm gone. I'll come over by myself. All you have to do is hand him to me. Can I have a minute to say goodbye? Of course. OK. Give me a second. I'll put him in the stroller and um, I'll bring him outside. Thank you. You're doing the right thing. She's going to do it? She's coming outside. She wants me to meet her. <laughs> Mason, thank you. Good work, man. Hey, that was great, Mason. I'm going to go with you. No, no, you can't. She wants me to meet her alone. If that was Wait, the deal, I... you should definitely go alone. But I, I just want to hold him. Tori, you'll be holding him soon enough. I better get over there. Okay. I don't want her to change her mind. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What, are, what is that? Those idiots! What's going on? It's the police. They didn't wait. Oh, my God. Oh, no, mother, stupid, lame brain, idiot. All right, talk to him. Tell him we'll get rid of him. Come on, I'm pick up the phone. Cruz, look. There's smoke coming out of that little shack over there. Look at it. We got it. It's on fire. Jeez, Mr. Barbie Capwell, does. I thought you were a classy guy. I guess I was wrong. Classy guy. <laughs> because you are a pig, would you say to drop it? Am I a sweet and sour pig or am I a roast pig with plum sauce? You are both. Anyway, I'm glad to see you in such a good mood. Well, thanks to you. I know, I, I was a little down. I guess it's just because moving, you know, it brings up all those messy little feelings. I know exactly how you feel. Do you too? 
Well, yeah, you know, I think for everybody, you start looking around at all these packed boxes and stuff, and uh, you get a little homesick. Who are you homesick for? Oh, mysterious woman. <laughs> you know, I hardly know anything about you at all. Maybe I like it that way. Maybe I like being a woman of mystery. No, come on. I want you to tell me something. Have an egg roll? <laughs> all right. Be that way. Okay. I'm not going to drag it out of you. I'm just happy you're here. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Getting this apartment. Help me move in. And all this food. I'm always indebted to you, aren't I? Yeah, as a matter of fact, you are. And you know what? Hmm. It's payback time. Ah, uh, you know I knew it. You are a gold digger, aren't you? You are. What do you want? I'll give it to you. Anything. Ice cream. What? <laughs> well, just that I, I forgot to bring in dessert when I was out, so I just thought that uh, something chocolate would be nice. You want chocolate ice cream on top of all this yes, stuff? Yes, it would really be good. And so, on that note, there is a, a grocery store right around the corner. You are so Five wrong. minutes. Just five minutes. Oh, minutes. Oh, minutes. So. All right, I'll be back. Bite. <laughs> Chocolate ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to build this to my home phone. 805-555-1312. Thanks. Hi, baby. How are you? Oh, I've been thinking about you all day. What are you doing? Yeah? Yeah, me too. Tonight? Oh, uh... You know, just watching TV. Same old stuff. Old Beach Road. If Hal had an accident on Old Beach Road, then where was he going? Oh, what else was he near? Capwell Boathouse. Ah, that way, baby. That way. Oh, I knew you could do it. We're gonna be so rich. We're gonna be so rich. We're gonna be so rich. <laughs> Rio, Perry, wherever you wanna go, I'm telling you, I'm gonna get you the biggest, fattest, tackiest diamond ring that you ever saw in the entire world. Yeah. Where's the bubbles come? Hey, you gotta breathe, bimbo. Throw that fire in that can, man. Trying to get out here because of the smoke. Chip. At least we Chip. almost have it. My baby. Victoria. Where did you take me? I don't know. Oh, it's not here. It's not here. Oh, my God. What's going on? She took off, but you can't have gotten far. Let's you and me split up and find her. You two don't work. We're going to get your son back. <laughs> Check out on me, you understand? Don't you dare check out on me. Don't you dare do it. Come on. What's going on? Hey, don't just stand there. Come on, help me. Wait a minute, you're not leaving, are you? Hey, I got a party to go to. There's a beer down in LA with my name written all over it. <laughs> it was really nice to meet you. Same here. Hi. 
care of yourself. You know, I think I owe you an apology. What for? For being so pushy about that, making me go to that reunion. It's really none of my business, you're right. You think so? Yeah. I'm sure you have your reasons for not wanting to go, and you certainly don't have to explain them to me. So what do you say we have some dinner? I, I hear the swordfish is wonderful tonight, and we'll just... No, I don't have time for dinner. There's the reunion I have to be at in L.A. Would you go with me? I'd love to. So peaceful here. Can't you feel it? It's just you and me in that big old ocean. <laughs> you know, when I was a little girl, not all that much older than you. My sister used to read me a story about a town full of people who used to live underneath the sea. And there was a king, a queen, and a beautiful princess. <laughs> and they lived in this huge castle that was made out of clamshells and coral. And whenever they wanted to go somewhere, they just, they just got on the back of a seahorse and off they went. Sounded like such a nice place. Uh, yeah. I wanted to go visit. <laughs> Especially sometimes when my mom and my daddy would get into a big fight and they'd start hollering and screaming and throwing things. I would just close my eyes. And I would believe that I could slip down beneath that blue, blue water. Farther and farther and deeper and deeper. And then suddenly there I'd be. I'd be there in that secret kingdom. And all those fish people, they'd be so happy to see me. <laughs> they'd just have a big old party for me. They'd even welcome me into their homes. <laughs> oh, baby. You like that story, don't you, baby? But well, I promise, they'll welcome you, too. Well, Go away. I have to talk to you. Don't take another step. Or you'll never see me a chip again. Tonight, bonus checks for workers at a U.S. car company with a lot to celebrate. How Ford is taking on the Japanese and winning. I'm Tom Brokaw. Join me on NBC Nightly News.